Eric's in town for the Grid Life event. What's up, guys? And we're here at an undisclosed location, and we're going to talk about Eric's EG, right? My pride and joy for like the past five years, pretty much. <laughs> All my time and money, everything else, just every day in the garage almost. But yeah. I love it. It's what I do. Well, <clears throat> so first of all, thanks for coming down. Yeah. Thanks for coming to visit. Well, thanks for inviting me. And Well, of course. But the uh, event is this weekend, Yeah. right? Starts tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tomorrow we actually have one practice session in the evening, but the main, the majority of the event is going to be Saturday, Sunday okay. at Nola Motorsports Park. Yep. All right. How are you feeling about the event? Uh, feeling pretty good, uh, except for the fact that I've never been to NOLA and I haven't even looked at video yet, so I should probably do some research tonight and try to figure out what the track layout looks yeah. like. All right. It's actually been like maybe three years since I've been to a track that I've never been to. Mm. Um, actually, I take that back. I went to PPIR last season, but that was a pretty simple track to learn. But I think this one is going to be kind of challenging, so it's going to be a couple of sessions for me to get up to speed, but hopefully yeah. maybe by the second session I can kind of... Go ten times. Well, good. It you out. you go ten tenths and then you give me some pointers. <laughs> we, we can share data. I love sharing data. Yeah. It'll be a little bit different because your car is uh, a lot more horsepower yeah. than mine. My car might have a little bit more grip, but it's always fun to kind of compare that stuff. Mm, yeah, for sure. Compare but notes. as far as this car goes, what what have you done uh, to set the car for this event? Have you changed anything? Uh, for this event specifically. Uh, I mean, other than the new rules and stuff like that. But I mean. Yeah. Setup wise, is there anything yeah, that you learned? Wise, I definitely did set the car up for this event. Um, it's kind of hard for me to really sure. judge what setup the track needs, but I kind of made basically compare what the track map looks like to maybe some other tracks. Gotcha. Majority right hand corners. So based on that, you kind of want a little bit more camber on one side of the car compared to the other. And like you kind of want to adjust your corner weight, stuff like that. Um, I heard it's pretty bumpy. Yes. I actually heard that from you today. Yep. So I didn't yep. really account for that. Yep. So spring weights in the car are pretty stiff. Yep. But I do have a box of springs in the truck. So if it does what? come to that where the car is oversprung, I can definitely take some spring out of it. So what do you think about uh, some of the tracks that you've raced at this year? Top speed? What, what kind of uh, speeds are you seeing on the straights? Uh, the fastest track we've been to this year was at Road America, mm -hmm. and that was about 130 if you're by yourself, or like 133, 134 in the draft. Um, so the car is geared kind of awkwardly for that. Okay. Um, earlier this season, I tried to, so obviously it's How a, long is that straight, though? Or how, how long is that run? It's pretty long. I don't know how long in terms of like distance-wise, but it is a really long, long straightaway, and that's... That's actually not on the front straight. It's in the back going through the kink. So okay. Like this car, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this car coming out of the carousel, like you're carrying a, a lot of speed and yep. you actually go flat through the kink in this car That's at like cool. 117 miles per hour. So <laughs> after that, you're booking it into uh, Canada Corner yep. uh, around 134. But okay. like, like I said, the car is kind of geared awkwardly. So I actually try to keep it in fifth and raise the RPM to like 8,400. So it's a K24 gotcha. setup, six speed. Um, I raced this car with the B18 basically most of its entire life. So I'm used to three, four, five shifts. Um, I never used six in a race car before. Mm -hmm. So building this whole setup, I try to keep it with fifth. And unfortunately, um, just the way the whole engine setup works, I have a restrictor on it that pulls a lot of top end power. It just wouldn't make power above 8,000 RPM. So I actually have to use sixth gear. And sixth gear is a little bit too long. So gearing wise, it's not optimal, basically. Long story short, um, gotcha. hopefully this, this winter, I can kind of work on a different transmission setup um, I basically bought this transmission used from a guy and it seemed to be pretty good for what I needed to do with it this past season and it did pretty well um, but I'm really gonna kind of take it to the next level um, this next season maybe cool. try to figure out some different gear ratios and final yeah. drives well I will say that the front straight on NOLA is very bumpy when it comes into the brake zone yeah so watch out for that <laughs> so non ABS cars kind of you kinda are screwed. going yeah. yeah I mean in, in I mean even in the FK8 it's yeah. it's pretty sketchy uh, and then there are a couple of turns probably turn six and seven where they're the right at the apex there's a dip yeah. so there's like a there's a kind of like a bump right in the inside so but i mean G generally other, speaking other than that it's pretty it's pretty smooth yeah generally speaking this car actually does really well on bumpy tracks it has uh a, a coney 3011 double adjustable shocks that i had kind of custom valve to the setup and I, I had them for a while and they just work really well like it doesn't upset the car um so i'm not really worried about the bumps um 
we'll, we'll just see how the car does. Just basically just have to make sure the car doesn't bottom out. Like that's the critical part. Right, um, right. And obviously I run the car pretty low. I try to run it as low as I possibly can just to kind of lower the center of gravity. Um, once you start bottoming out though, like you have a ton of issues, like either bottoming out the tire into the chassis or yep. just like the splitter into the ground, you can upset the car pretty easily. But yeah. um, I do some trick stuff with like bump stops and packers to kind of get it to the point where the car won't bottom out depending on the track. But that's basically what I have to kind of figure out in the first couple of sessions at NOLA. Cool. Um, I will say NOLA has, I, I believe, some really fast sweepers. Oh, yeah. Right switchbacks. Yep. Yep. This car yep. excels in those kind of scenarios. Yep. So I don't know if you're familiar with Gingerman, but uh, the complex near the end of the track, 789, it's it's basically three really fast corners. Yeah. You're basically going flat out most of the way. Yep. Full right and then full left. Yeah. And this car is set up in a way that you can kind of throw it into those corners, get the rear to dance a little bit and you hook it all, you plant the throttle and it kind of just carries that ass center yeah. around. And it, it rotates really well. That's so cool. I'm hoping that I, this car I, does really well at that track. I think, I think that some of the corners will suit it fairly well. Yeah, so that's kind know? of the benefit of a front wheel drive car yep. is you can kind of set it up to where you get that sliding and you can just kind of mash sure. the throttle and you can carry that speed out where if you're in like a rear wheel drive Miata, you kind of have to like right, 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 a little bit more. Right. You've got to be um, a little more cautious with it. So that, that's where this car excels. It's those high speed like switchbacks. So um, the slow speed stuff is where it struggles. And I, I know I think the last corner at NOLA is pretty tight. Yes, so, it is. It's yeah. tough and it's tough on front wheel drive cars too. Yeah. You're really, really loading this tire up in this corner. Yeah. So So that's kind of like, it's like, yeah, it's give and take, right? Like yep. you can set the car up to rotate a lot on slow speed stuff and then it can be diabolical in the high yeah. speed or you, can, you yep. can put more wing into it and then it kind of costs you some drag. So like I said, that's all the things I'm going to have to figure out in like two sessions. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by the time yeah. of our first race, I know the track, know the setup, know what I did to the car is right. Yeah, that's but, good. The, the good thing is I don't really change setup that much from like what is known throughout the entire season. So I'm at a pretty good base point with setup wise and just little tweaks here and there should get me should get me there. Gotcha. So let's do a quick walk around. Yeah. And you know, just I'm just looking at the front of the car now. What wheels and tires do you run? Uh, so I know that you're on Hoosiers. Yeah. Do you run Hoosiers at every event? Uh, yeah, basically. That's it. So that's yeah, so that's that's the the one, right? The, the way the, the the car runs in the Grid Life Touring Cup, and the way we do this class is essentially part of weight class, and we also try to equalize tire size based on the weight of the car. Okay. So if your car's heavier, you're gonna be able to run a wider tire, and also if you want to choose to run like a street tire, like a 200 treadwear, you can run a much wider 200 treadwear just to kind of equalize it to the Hoosier because. These Hoosier R7s are like phenomenal. Like the amount of grip they produce is insane. So this actually is a 225, 45, 15 R7, and it's mounted on a 15 by nine plus 35 Koenig decagram. Um, I love these wheels because they're light, they're affordable. They come in the right width and yep. offset. Yep. And it just works with this uh, wheel and tire package. This Ooh. car is, is really nice. And like, I know a lot of people like to run the 17s with the K-Series. Sure, sure, just sure. Just because like of engine height issues, yep. but I managed to get the engine in the correct position to where I can run on the 15s, I can run it pretty low, and it still clears the hood, but just barely. But um, but yeah, I love the wheel and tire package. It's kind of what I've been running for the entire, basically, life of this car. And it's it's a square setup, so mm -hmm. it's 225s all around. Um, I know some people like to run staggered, but in my opinion, I love the square setup because I could just rotate sure. the tires around and right, just kind right. of cycle in new tires. And I always have kind of replacements if I if there ever is a gotcha. scenario where yeah, I sure. break a wheel or stuff like that. So. Right. So, and as far as the arrow goes, I mean, it looks, you know, I don't want to say stock. It doesn't yeah. look stock, but yeah. I mean, it doesn't look extreme, you know. Is this within the limits of the class? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, there's some stuff that's open in the class. Like, you can do kind of whatever you want with the hoods, but you're limited to the size of the fender vents you can run. And then, like, the splitter here you're limited to a three inch splitter. So you can't go three inches past the profile of the front bumper. And the other cool thing about this class is you can kind of pick and choose what you want to run arrow wise. So if you choose to run a splitter like this, you have to add 3% to your weight, which, Got it. which is roughly about 70 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And the same thing goes with the rear wing. Um, you can run up to like a 1400 square inch wing and if you choose to run it, you have to add, again, another 3% um, to that, which is... So for this aero package, you're basically adding 150 pounds to the car, but you're getting the benefit of extra downforce. Sure. So you kind of... You kind of deal with it. Yeah, you kind of yeah. deal with it, but it's also like, it's pretty cool because like based on the tracks, you can choose to like not run aero. You can, okay. you can run it without a splitter, without a wing, 
and it might make the car to drive, but you'll have less weight in the car. So gotcha. based on the tracks, like some people can actually make that work, but you have to kind of change a lot of the setup to the car. So with this, this car is set up to run full aero. I've been running it like this the entire season and I think it works really well. Um, side skirts, these are um, homemade by my Adam, Adam Jubay. It's just aluminum bent gotcha. over. Yep. Um, we're limited to how wide you can have the side skirts. So we're basically five inches here. Okay. Um, other than that, you can kind of basically, you, you have the freedom to do other things. Like you can do mirrors, right? Like, like I said, the vents, you can do vents if you want, but you're limited to a size. Um, but you're really only taking that weight if you choose to run a splitter or a wing. Gotcha. Yeah. So as far as the inside goes, uh, I mean, did you put the cage in here? Was it was it was the car cage when you got it? How did that? No, work I out? bought What's... this car. Um, it was uh, it was a NASA. I think it was an H4 or an H5 car. It was actually from Cali, and some dude shipped it over, used it as a track day car, and then he wasn't really interested. So I bought it. And it had a D16, but it had the cage in it already, and okay. I got it for a steal. Sure. So I figured it was a perfect platform sure. to kind of start a, a full wheel-to-wheel -wheel race car with. Um, but since I bought the car, everything's essentially been replaced, like engine, interior, like this whole interior setup here is completely different. Um, just a lot of time and money. <laughs> Oh yeah, well that's uh, that's how it turn. I mean that's how it goes, you know, right? Yeah, it doesn't. Exactly. It, it normally doesn't start that way, but that's the way it ends, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, the cage was in the car, and it was a pretty decent cage, so most of the hard work was done regarding that. Um, and the, the shell was actually in really good condition, like no major body damage. Sure. Yeah. I mean it looks great, and I it's mean I know. It's kind of hard to find a clean EG, let alone a race car oh, that's hey. been like this since like probably the early 2000s. Oh, I know. I know the struggle there for yeah. sure. So. Okay, well this, yeah, this wing looks pretty sweet. Now, let's open the hood yeah. and uh, check out this engine. I actually had a couple scenarios where I forgot hood pins at a couple of events. So if you see the, the roof there. Yeah, it happens. Um, you know, it happens going like 110, all of a sudden the hood flies yeah. up, destroys your windshield, yeah, but. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a pretty thin hood. Where did that, where'd you get that? That's uh, some dude by Damn. the name of Frank Fiberglass. Okay. Babies. And he made it for like a lot of drag cars. I don't know if he still makes them, but I got this that like four years super ago. Super thin. Yeah, it's light, and it's got the Mustang GT 500 yep. eBay hood vent. Yep. That it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Cut cool. it out. Kind of try to extract some air out of it. Works pretty good. Um, but yeah, engine setup. This is basically mostly pretty simple. It's a JDM K24A. So like I guess what you would find like an Odyssey yep. like in Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, essentially almost the same exact thing as a TSX here in the USDM market. Yep. Um, all we've really done to it, uh, my buddy Nick Zablocki basically kind of rebuilt the majority of the engine. Um, but it's mostly stock. Like the entire block is stock besides Type S oil pump. And other than that, we just did, um, we did Brian Crower valve springs, retainers, just to kind of make sure we're not going to have valve flow at high RPM. So I, I revved this engine to like eight grand. Um, and just because it's a K24, I just wanted to make sure it can do that reliably. But other than that, everything else is stock. Stock cams, um, stock pistons, stock compression ratio. Um, all the internals, externals here, sorry. That was all converted to RSX. Mm -hmm. um, and like track tough, swirl pod, just to kind of get efficient cooling out of it. But the tricky thing about this class, um, like I said before, it's essentially a powered weight class. So if you make a lot of power, you have to add a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And if I ran this unrestricted, which was like about 225 to the wheels, the car would have to weigh almost 2,900 pounds, which is a ton of weight. Sure. Um, so this engine's actually restricted. This past season, I restricted it to about 190 horsepower. And the way I did that um, was essentially with just a, like a, a basically a, a restrictor plate. So it's a 41 mil diameter hole that goes in between the throttle body and the intake manifold. And all the, all that does is basically pull the power um, from 225 to 190. <laughs> right. So it, it's, right. it's kind of like It's weird, choked up right? a bit, but it's, it's what you gotta like, do. Like people, like normal people, like time attack guys might not understand, like why are you pulling power? Like sure, you want more power, sure. but that's just the way the class sure, works. Right. It's power to weight. Yep, yep, yep. So with, with it at 190 horsepower, the car weighs 2450 with me in it. Um, just because I think that's a pretty good weight for this car. And I. You probably saw I have the bricks inside the interior yep. just to get the weight up. Yep. Um, but yeah, actually, tomorrow we're going to hit the dyno. I'm actually testing a different intake manifold setup. I used to run the RBC from the 8th Gen SI, um, and it actually made too much power, so we're going to actually try to reduce power even more 
Um, hopefully we're gonna gain some mid-range with the TSX manifold and pull some peak power mm -hmm. to get the weight down even lower. So tomorrow we're gonna be tuning locally. Yeah. Um, you know a guy who has a dyno rod yeah. here. Yeah, yep. Um, mm -hmm. yep. And then my buddy Mikey's gonna help me kind of tune this, see what we can yeah. get out of it. Yeah, um, I mean, it's cool. These manifolds, to be honest, they're underrated. Yeah. You know, a lot of people take them off and throw them away. Yeah. But I mean, this I think is gonna work really well for what you want out of this. Yeah, and oh, actually, yeah. I actually had a problem with the old manifold where it was too close to the radiator. And this is a custom radiator. Um, I think it used to be a Will All Young's uh, huge time attack. Oh, okay, it. okay. So some, my buddy had it and he sold it to me. But like, it just, it's so massive it's, it's and it's very, so close very to the manifold big. that it just causes heat soak. Sure, so I try yeah. to like isolate it as much as I could right. with some heat insulation and gold foil. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it kind of keeps those IETs cold. But other than that, engine setup in general is pretty basic. It's managed by a Haltech uh, Elite 1500 ECU. Um, I got a ton of your parts on this car, hybrid racing. Like, basically all of the major swap components was uh, basically you guys helped yeah. me out with that this year. So like you saw the shifter, um, all the cables and stuff like that. Um, and all like the sweet like like oil cap, like awesome stuff. But um, yeah, the intake, I managed to work with the, uh, the different manifold. Yeah, that shifter is probably one of like my favorite parts about the whole swap. Um, I actually lifted it up off the ground a little bit too to kind of get it closer to the Oh wheel. yeah, sure, yeah, see that. Put, like, it's got some spacers, spacers on there, yeah. But yeah, like everything kind of just like came together so easily with all the parts like that I needed. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Uh, I think I have Skunk 2 headers on it. I think the Mega Power um, transmission setup. I got this used. I believe it's uh, RSX Type S with the four seven final drive. Okay. The the funny thing about this transmission is it has a. Uh, it was using an autocross car. Mm -hmm. So the dude had it in a Fiat X19 or whatever. Oh yeah. Engine. yeah, 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 yeah. And he had a straight cut first and second gear that are really long. <laughs> so the second gear in this transmission is the same exact ratio as third gear. So I have to skip a <laughs> gear when I go from second to fourth, or like first to third. It's really weird. So like I said before, like. The gears are not optimal, but I yeah. don't use first and second gear on a track. Fair enough, yeah. But okay. M factory, limited set differential. That'll hopefully replace this off season with like Elvis Geiken, um, just because I've been using that on the B series setup for a while, and right. I really love that setup. But uh, okay. Yeah. So, other than that, like majority of my time is spent on the suspension on this car. So like the Coney's that I said before um, is a big big part of the suspension package. Um, Hone development was on board this past season. We did a lot of stuff with like suspension geometry. So like we did front extended ball joints. In the rear we did, uh, we basically adjusted the roll centers in the back as well. Um, yeah, PCI, uh, Kingpin, we do all the sphericals. Like every bushing on this car is spherical. So like basically everything on this car has been basically maximized to its full potential pretty much for the Grid Life Touring Cup class. And it's been pretty good. It won the championship in 2020. And technically, this event this weekend is actually the first event of 2021. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it kind of worked out, I guess. So slight rule changes, um, which kind of affect me a little bit. So that's essentially why I'm going to the dyno tomorrow to kind of start the season off on a good foot. Yeah. So hopefully we can get some wins. Yeah, I think that a good result here would be a great uh, start to next year and lots of racing and lots of fun stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you've got this thing stacked up with bricks in here man yeah so there's no bolts on those yet but actually <laughs> so this this plate right here this is actually rewards weight so we have this cool thing in this class where if you win enough races you have to actually have blah, you actually have to add weight gotcha. to the car yep. um, with the max of 150 so that's 150 bricks <laughs> that i'll pull out at the start of the weekend ah. hopefully by the end of the weekend i'll have them all in there which means that i've won a couple of races <laughs> but like in the back i have like 225 pound yeah. plates. Yeah, no, right I, I was looking back here. You got well, I don't like know if I can see battery. it, but there's like a big. Yeah, weight, weight savings is not a goal with this car because I have to actually get it up to the 2430 or 2450 with me in it. Um, so with the power reduction on the engine, hopefully we'll be around 2350. So hopefully we'll pull out 100 pounds of weight with this car yeah. this weekend, which would be awesome because less weight is less stuff breaking, yep. yep. easier on the brakes, easier on the tires. Yep. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of the goal. Cool. But if it doesn't work out, then we can think of something else for the start of next year. Yeah. Well, so. we're excited, and you know, like I said, thanks for coming by. And, yeah, I appreciate you guys and, showing me around, and you guys were a huge help this season. Like all the parts were 
were awesome on this car and I think it really helped me get those wins because everything just works flawlessly, like no issues. It's just really, really well engineered parts, yeah. honestly. Well, that's good to hear and I'm excited about 2021. Yeah, me too, you know? man. Excited about getting some more wins. Yeah, we will do. <laughs> I'll try my best. All right. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, or man. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Oh, and hold on. The we'll be out there and... Uh, the best part. The best part. It's got neons. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I actually made them green to kind of match your car a little oh, bit. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, they got to be purple and gold out here. Well, I can change it. <laughs> I can have it like green <laughs> colors if I want to. Yeah. I have the other ones like up in here. So like when it's nighttime, they kind of shine out from the Oh, bed. it's going to be awesome. So tomorrow, you said practice is at 5? Yeah, we have a practice session. So it's going to be in the dark. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's the sun's so. going to yeah. go down. Yeah. That's why <laughs> That's why I have these headlights oh, down yeah. here is because we actually had a couple of night races at Gingerman. Oh, yeah. And without those, like, really bright fogs, you can't see anything. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If and it does get night. There's no light out in NOLA either, bro. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is pitch black. Yeah. So, that so we'll... Uh, We'll see how this goes tomorrow. And so uh, tomorrow we've got the dyno. I'm sure we'll yeah. probably not going to film any of that. It won't be too exciting. Yes, it's going to be yes, less power. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, tomorrow we'll set up at the paddock. Yeah. And we will get ready to go for the weekend. Yeah. Is so, that your first time at a Grid Life event with you guys? You know what? I didn't want to say it on camera, but now that you put me on the spot, this is my first time at a Grid Life. Well, it's cool though. He's it's gone local. before. He's, He's been to uh, Atlanta and... So, Atlanta's a good one. Atlanta's one of my favorites, but the track was kind of a, a little bit of a pain with the grid life guys. So but, I hear. Yeah. So the good news is, is that NOLA doesn't really get cool events like this. So everybody's awesome. going to be super, super yeah. happy and super yeah. nice. And um, like, I'm so excited to check out the track and also like the area around oh, it. Yeah. Even Baton Rouge, like where yeah. you guys are at, like it's yeah. so cool down here. So. Well, yeah, as long we'll, as it's not the Indy car race, we'll be fine. Uh, well, as long as it doesn't rain, and yeah, I think I've got well, bad news, I think it, it might looks rain. like it does well, that's rain. Why, that's why I got fresh uh, Hoosier H2Os, yeah. if it does rain. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, anyway, we'll probably pick this up and uh, film some more stuff over the weekend. Yeah, dude, but, for sure. you know, this thing is awesome, and I can't wait to see it on track. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, likewise with your car. Your car looks sick, man. Well, <laughs> I, still want you to I still want you to drive it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, well, I got to put Maybe the, you can trade keys. I got to put the... I mean, I don't know if I'm going to fit in your seat, but... <laughs> you don't, can try. don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, that's all <laughs> I'm saying.